Hey guys, there are many schools of thoughts out there concerning analysis of stocks and other things, whether fundamental analysis is the best, technical analysis is the best, um, and which one you should use. So today I want to tackle this to um, topic of fundamental and technical analysis. So first, there's two types of analysis, like we just said. And we're going to look into those. The well, first book of is fundamental analysis. So I'm going to give you a brief definition of it. Fundamental analysis is a method of evaluating the intrinsic value of an asset and analyzing the factors that could influence its price in the future. This form of analysis is based on external events and influences as well as financial statements and industry. Now, I have a simpler way to define that, but I, I accept this definition for one reason, because when it comes to stocks, I do fundamental analysis on them. And quite simply, that's the financials of the company is the fundamental analysis of the stocks. But when it comes to fundamental analysis for commodities and currencies, they also have fundamental analysis. And that's a little different, which we're going to cover later. Now, technical analysis. In finance, technical analysis is an analysis methodology for analyzing and forecasting the direction of prices through the study of past market data, primarily price and volume. And we'll get into that a little later as well as a simpler explanation for it or definition. Now, there is technical and fundamental analysis for stocks, commodities, and currencies, also called Forex. But the fundamental analysis differs. In other words, what you look at for fundamental analysis for stocks is different than for commodities and currencies. So technical analysis. Technical analysis is usually measured in charts. And one of the most popular these days are what's called candlestick charts. So here on our left side, we have a candlestick chart. This is for a stock called MGP ingredients, ticker symbol MGPI. If you know how to read a candlestick chart, the analysis is pretty much the same for stocks, currencies, or commodities, with, or futures, which is like a derivative for com commodities. So in any event, if you can read a candlestick chart, you can analyze stocks, commodities, and currencies fundamental, or, or I should say technically. They're all the same. The technical analysis for all three of these are the same. However, the fundamental analysis for all three are not the same. So let's get into the stocks fundamental analysis. And the fundamental analysis for stocks is basically company information. It's information about the company. And the reason for that is because when you're buying stocks, you're actually buying a share or shares of a company. You're actually investing in the company 
you're buying the shares of the company because you feel that those shares are going to go up in value over time and also because they may pay a dividend. When I perform fundamental analysis on a stock, I'm actually checking the data about the company. And I'm checking that data for two reasons. One, to see if it's reasonably priced. If those shares of the company that I'm buying are at a reasonable price at the time. And second, to see if the company is fundamentally sound. Who wants to buy a failing company? No, you want to buy a fundamentally sound company that's growing. And here we have that question, who will want to buy an unsound or failing company? Now, the next we come to is fundamental analysis for currencies, or Forex as it's called. Since currencies is the currency of a particular country, the fundamental analysis is country data. What do I mean currency is the currency of a particular country? What's the currency of the United States? The U.S. dollar. What's the currency of Japan? It's the Japanese yen. What's the currency of my wife's country, Tanzania? It's the Tanzanian shilling. Next to Tanzania is Kenya. They have a shilling also, but it's a different shilling. It has a different value. Just like you have other countries that have a dollar. Um, I can think of, say, Canada. They have the Canadian dollar. It's not the same as the American dollar, you know. So some currencies may be the same name, but they're not the same because they're for different countries. So currencies are currencies of countries. And if you want a deeper explanation on that, I have a video on my channel, which is um, what are currencies. You can look at that video and get more an understanding on it. The kind of country data that can affect currency prices over long term. Because realize, in the short term, if you're going to buy the currency for like an hour or a day, then these are factors that may not affect the currency prices over that short time. But if you're going to be holding it for a month or so, these are things that can affect that price. Things that affect currency prices over longer term are sovereign credit ratings, interest rates, inflation, gross domestic product. These are, this is economic data for countries. And that's the kind of things that affect currency prices. So, Company information may affect stock prices, but country information affects currency prices. And if I ran the schools, we know I don't, I'm not a teacher, I don't run the schools. But if I ran the schools, every economic student would be required to learn about currencies to make their acquired knowledge more practical. What do I mean by that? You have a lot of people who said, and they're definitely saying more recently, they don't really learn things in school. Or they learn things which have no practical application in life. 
um, certain things that you learn in school. After you get out of school, those are things you never end up having to use. Well, this type of, there's economics. I went through economics in high school quite a while ago, but I went through economics in high school. And I really don't feel that the information that I learned in economics was information I used or even had to revert back to during the course of my life. But if I was learning currencies at that time, the information that I was learning in economics would have had a big impact upon what was going on in my life. And there's all kinds of financial opportunities that I could have taken advantage of from those things that I learned. Because in economics, now all of this data that I would have had to look through in currencies, it would have been applicable to me then. You know, so there's things that they learn in school that you have to learn in school that they could relate to real life opportunities or situations that I feel they're not doing. And we'll come back on that subject when we look at commodities. So here we are on commodities fundamental analysis. And fundamental analysis for commodities or futures, which is a derivative of commodities. And you get more explanation on that in the video on my channel, What Are Commodities? Is country data as well. However, it's more so the data that can affect supply and demand. When you have an oversupply of something in commodities, that causes prices to go down. And when you have an undersupply of it, it causes prices to go up. An example would be Brazil, which is the major exporter of sugar suffering from a hurricane which would affect the supply of sugar coming from Brazil. This would increase the price of sugar, um, just to make that more understandable. One thing that they look at very, um, very carefully for those who are involved in commodities they look at weather. They're constantly looking at weather. Because you may have particular commodities which are coming from a particular place, just like I used in this example, Brazil. Brazil is one of the major exporters of sugar. So if they was receiving news that a hurricane was going to hit Brazil, everybody buying sugar in the commodities exchanges would have their eyes on weather, seeing what's going to happen with Brazil. And knowing that if the hurricane actually hits Brazil, and it does damage, the price of sugar is really going to go up because now that's affected the supply and demand. There's less supply of sugar and more demand for sugar, making sugar more expensive. So the commodity will increase in price. However, if everything happens normally 
and let's say the hurricane veers off and doesn't directly impact Brazil, then the price will more than likely stay the same, or at the least it may drop some, but more likely stay the same. So, the fundamental analysis for commodities is also country data, but also things that affect supply and demand, news events. I can remember during COVID lockdowns, one of the major um, pork is also a commodity. And one of the major pork sellers in America, um, they actually had a lot of employees getting sick. So they were sending a bunch of people home and that was affecting them supplying pork. They were actually killing pigs, not even selling them, just killing them because they didn't have enough staff to be doing the carrying out the functions of the company. And this definitely affected stock, um, not stock, this affected commodity prices. So commodity prices for the pork or lean hogs came down dramatically and over time it moved up. Also, as the, as the number of international oil producers increase, the price of oil may drop. And as they fall, the price of oil may increase. In other words, you have oil producers internationally. If one of them closes down, the, num the price of oil could increase. But if a new one pops up on the scene, the price of oil may drop. Oil gets cheaper. And I could think of when Russia first got into this war with Ukraine. And Russia was one of the major countries providing oil. But when Russia got into this war with Ukraine, they started trying to put this sanction on Russia selling their oil. Well, what does that mean? If they sanction Russia, there's less places that you could buy oil from internationally, which means now there's less oil supply. So what happened with the price of oil as a result of the Russia-Ukraine conflict? The price of oil increased. So fundamental analysis for commodities is country data as well, but it's also anything in particular that affects supply and demand. Now, which is better? Some people only use technical analysis for trading, and some only use fundamental analysis. I actually use both in my analysis of stocks. I'm just talking about stocks for the moment now. I use both in my analysis of stocks. I use fundamental analysis to tell me which stocks are okay to buy. And then I use technical analysis to let me know the best time to buy it. So fundamental analysis, fundamental analysis will tell me what to buy. Dwayne, this is quality. It's at a good price. You can buy this. But don't buy it at any time because it may still be dropping. You don't want to buy it and it goes down in value. You want to buy it when it's going up in value. So now that I've used the fundamental analysis, 
fundamental analysis to tell me what to buy. I use technical analysis to let me know when to buy it. Now, why stocks? I'm familiar with stocks, currencies, and commodities. So why do I focus primarily on stocks, which is something that was asked of me recently? And first I want to deal with this. Um, I don't deal with cryptocurrencies. I've known about them for a while. I remember doing a seminar talking about them in 2014. That's when companies were giving away cryptocurrency instead of putting up money to buy it. But I'm not aware of cryptocurrencies having any fundamentals, just technicals, meaning candlestick charts. I don't want anything without any fundamentals. Like I said, fundamentals is what lets you know what's worth buying, what's quality, and what's a good price for that quality. Now, when I buy fundamentally sound stocks to hold long term, I find much less manipulation. And what do I mean by that? In my experience, it seems like with the currencies brokers and the futures brokers, the ones I've experienced, even if you were right about the direction of a trade, the brokers would somehow intentionally shake you out of that trade and trigger not just stops, but trailing stops before the currency or commodity moved in the direction you chose. Now, what do I mean by that? And I'm not speaking about during the day, because during the day, there's heavy volume. But in my experience with stocks, a lot of the movement that happens, it happens overnight when markets are closed. So when I wake up in the morning and the... um. Stock market opens at 9.30 Eastern Time. Maybe I'll check my brokerage account 10 minutes after the market's opened. My stock may already be up like $2 a share because it made the move overnight while the market was closed. So when I buy stocks, I'm buying them and holding them for a while. My objective is to hold them for over a year because with long-term um, capital gains, you get more tax advantages if you own the stock for a, mo a year or more. But even if I hold the stock for a month, I may hold the stock for a month and I've gained like 20% on it. I've gotten like a 20% return on it in that month and then I let it go. However, on the other hand, if you buy a currency or a commodity, and you hold them overnight, you may find brokers who will intentionally, I can't say I know this for a fact, but in my experience, it feels like there's, there's things that they do 
to intentionally shake you out of the trade and trigger your stops. Trigger your stops and shake you out of the trade. Then the way that you felt that that commodity or currency was going to move, it moves in the morning anyway. But they shook you out of the trade before that even happened. And if they're doing that to me, I doubt they're doing that to me alone. It has to be happening to other people as well. And so, from the experiences that I've had, I feel that there was more manipulation going on with the currencies brokers and the commodities brokers. I didn't find that with the stocks, and I also found a more reliable system based on fundamental analysis um, to figure out which way stocks would be going or when they've reached their bottom and to determine that they were fundamentally sound. So in any event, um, that's my little scale on fundamental analysis and technical analysis of basically the entire portfolio income, which is stocks, currencies, and commodities. If you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments, and I will get back to you with answers. And I look forward to speaking to you in the next video.